when I was um, on the faculty at uh, CIHS, the California Institute for Human Science, um, which was a graduate school and a, a research center. And there, as a research center, its job was to try to test the untestable in order to, in, to bring science to bear on trying to figure out how to test things like the chi energy in the meridians and graph them on a computer, the chakras, um, subtle energy fields, um, things like Reiki. How can we test these things that seem to be unmeasurable because their energy is so subtle and our instruments are so gross? And one of the devices that the CIHS had at that time was this shielded room. <clears throat> now this room is all made of copper uh, and so the the walls and the door and the floor and the ceiling it's all made of copper. These are industrially bought rooms. Um, on the outside they have special sealed ports where you can have uh, what they show com uh, the computers inside. The computers were never inside. The computers are always on the outside plugged into these shielded ports so that the electromagnetic fields from the computers and the equipment did not enter into the room. <clears throat> the only thing that was in the room was passive sensors that collected information but did not uh, emit any kind of electromagnetic field. <clears throat> now these rooms also were 100 percent dark space, no photons. And the reason for that is because uh, photons, photon interactions uh, generate electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic fields wiring in your walls and things like that produce um, uh, photons and heat and electromagnetic energy. So photons issue forth from the interactions of electromagnetic fields and vice versa. <clears throat> so the room had to be 100% dark space so photons wouldn't be interacting to create electromagnetic fields and it needed to be shielded from all electromagnetic fields so it didn't create photons. So one way to calibrate this room was to uh, was to plug in uh, computer sensors through these ports and on the inside was something called a photon counter and the photon counter would emit a single photon into the room and count how many photons came back. So if you put one photon out of the photon counter into the room and you got 2,000 back, then you've got a leak somewhere. It's either an electromagnetic leak or a photon leak, a light leak link, a light leak. So that's how you calibrate the room. <clears throat> It takes a few months to calibrate the room and retest and retest until you can get the countdown to an industry standard of about 60 photons. You subtract 59 photons from anything you do. Okay, so <clears throat> why are we doing this? Um, once you've got the room calibrated, then the idea was to put a person in this room and fire up the photon counter, close the door, shut the lights out, now you're in this shielded room, no light, fire up the photon counter and that's where you measure a photon count f coming off of your body. Uh, now originally this was done by the founder of California Institute for Human Science, um, uh, a guy named Motoyama who was a scientist and a Shinto priest uh, who had uh, a facility in Japan where he had done these experiments and then uh, bought the same equipment for the California Institute in Encinitas, California in order to reproduce those experiments here in the US. So the idea was that once we fire up the photon counter you get a photon count coming off your body from the subatomic processes of life itself. Interactions at subatomic levels uh, generate photons that spin out of your body and electromagnetic fields and heat and a bunch of other things. Uh, so the count was one photon per second per centimeter squared. So that means that um, 
every square centimeter, like every square centimeter on every square centimeter of your body has got one photon coming out every second. So we're glowing with photons, one photon every second for every square centimeter of your body. And <clears throat> except 100 photons to 1,000 photons per second coming off of the seven chakra areas. So all of a sudden we had scientific proof that something is going on in these seven zones. And you can't measure the subtle energy field of the chakra itself, but you can measure its effect on the physical universe of your body as it liberates photons when the subtle energy fields interact with physical tissue. So physics and metaphysics come together in this, you know, kind of magical shielded room. And <clears throat> we could see that um, these chakras, uh, measurements of the photons, were showing that maybe this one has 75 photons and this one has 100 and this one has 25 and this one's got 15 and this one's got 100 and... All of a sudden we can see uh, that not only are we proving a concept that there's actually something there because we can measure the photon count coming off, but we can also measure its relative balance level of the chakras. And <clears throat> of course to you know a, a, a madcap scientist like me, the very first thing that I want to do is I want a major funding with a, a hundred heart patients to see what their heart chakra looks like. Uh, if you see a extremely low count, an abnormally low count in the heart chakra of all these people, then you can start to extrapolate that perhaps we could predict heart attacks 20 to 30 years before they become physical by measuring the subtle energy fields because it shows up there first. Next step, well, let's take um, a half a dozen different... Um, he, uh, holistic healing techniques that claim to balance the chakras. Um, healing touch or polarity therapy or for me can I influence the function of these chakras with a specific sound wave or a color frequency that's an octave of that. Um, all of a sudden all these experiments you want to do. Can I affect the functioning of the heart chakra of somebody who has it extremely low and has a physical counterpart of some kind of condition with their heart. Can I change the condition of the heart by changing the photon count of the heart chakra with color therapy or sound therapy or electromagnetic fields or Reiki treatment? Uh, this was kind of the exciting world that I was in in the California Institute because these kind of research projects were going on all the time. Motoyama had come up with a method and patented it called the AMI machine, the Acupuncture Meridian Identification Device, which was a computer-based program for measuring the chi energy on, the, on each meridian and graphing it on a computer with a printout. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, and I got certified in that so I could bring it to my office and start testing people. Um.